Good morning, Rotarians. Thank you for joining us. This club meeting is called to order. Yeah. Shortly, I'll be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. Periodically, I'll bring the screen down so we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and enjoy, and enjoy some more dialogue. Family and friends are always welcome. So, uh, don't hesitate to invite somebody like your dog groomer. Feel free to speak out as you would in an in-person meeting, but if you're not using your microphone, please be sure to put yourself on mute, or maybe I'll do it at the cost of a club fine. Welcome, everybody, <clears throat> to the Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club meeting for December, what, January 6th, what month are we in? January 6th, 2021, and that is volume 27 of my presidential year. We have an amazing Rotary Club, and I am so thankful to be a part of it. And at this time, I'll introduce our guest. It looks like we have Diana Rios from the Noon Club. Thank you, Diana, for joining us. Cool. And back to it. <clears throat> So at this time, we normally be doing the flag salute, but since the meeting is virtual, why not a little bit of an American history lesson? Did you know that on this day in the year 1920, the Yankees bought Babe Ruth from the Boston Red Sox? Ruth had been playing with the uh, Boston Red Sox before this time, and Harry Frazé was the owner of the Red uh, Sox, and he said he was forced to sell because he could no longer meet that slugger's salary demands. He just wanted too much money. Uh, so he went to the Yankees. Also on this day uh, in 1912, New Mexico became the 47th state. That's all today. President Simon, do you know what Babe Ruth's salary cap was? Uh, you know, I heard that they paid him just in candy bars. <laughs> It, it's just, you know, that's internet research for you. It's wildly inaccurate sometimes. Do you, by chance? No, but if you're saying that the candy bar was named after Babe Ruth, then you're probably thinking that the baseball field in Chicago is named after Wrigley Gum, too. Yes, yes. That was, that was my thought. Is that correct? Okay. okay. Yes. I think he got paid about 10,000 bucks that year. Wow. Big money. <laughs> Man, times have changed. Um, all right. Well, let's keep going. Let's, let's get inspired. <clears throat> Inspirational message for the day. No, this is not the beginning of a new chapter of your, in your life. This is the beginning of a new book. The first book is already closed, ended, tossed into the seas. The new book is newly opened and just begun. So look, it's the first page and it's a beautiful one. We're in Rotary, we're together. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Four-way test, we're gonna call on uh, Steve Garrison. Steve, would you do the four-way test for us this morning? The four-way test of the things we say and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Excellent. Thank you so very, very much. Let's see here. What's up next? Backpacks. Um, let's see. This week we have Buster and Lori Garrison, as well as uh, Jeannie Weiss. And... January 13th is Debbie and Jim Scaife, as well as Joanne Sinner. And at this time, I'm going to bring down the screen share and ask anybody from our wonderful Rotary Club if you have any special announcements, anything you'd like to bring to the table, anything going on in your lives. No, whole lot of nada. Okay. New Year. Well, let's keep it moving, shall we? Okay. <clears throat> so being an art educator every week, I'm doing, or most every week, I'm doing a little 
dive into an artist, talking about some of their work, taking a look at it. And then I have Rotarian give me their kind of dissertation on what they thought, what they see, critique and whatnot. So let's do it again, shall we? This week, we're looking at Ruth Carter's work. So who is Ruth Carter? Well, Carter began her career working as an intern in her hometown of Springfield, Massachusetts, and at the Santa Fe Opera. She moved to Los Angeles in 1986 and was working for the Los Angeles Theater Center, uh, the Los Angeles Theater Center, where Carter met director Spike Lee, who hired her for his second film at the time was called School Days, and with whom she worked on a number of films uh, thereafter, including Do the Right Thing, Mo Bretter Blues, Jungle Fever, Malcolm X, and several others. With With over 40 films to her credit, mastering the look of multiple periods and genres and envisioning the clothing and overall appearance of the character or performer, During her nearly 30-year career, Carter has been nominated three times for Academy Awards for Best Costume Design. And uh, here we have, uh, we've got the illustration that she did on the left-hand side. Uh, There's like the illustration of the zoot suits from the Malcolm X movie there. In the center, we've got Do the Right Thing, one of my my favorite favorite movies probably of all time. Maybe it's just because it was on VHS growing up, but um, really colorful. It was, it was interesting uh, when I was kind of diving into it, uh, she was talking about that movie and they had a very, very low budget. So they relied on a lot of product placement and one of those uh, was Nike. And so they had to use all these like compression shorts and Nike shoes. And she said, you know, a lot of people in, in Brooklyn, you know, it, it centers in this area called Bed-Stuy. They weren't wearing clothes like that, but, but they, had to, they had to make it work the best they could. And so they really focused more on the colors and the patterns. And um, anyway, it was quite interesting. And then on the right-hand side, we've got some, some clips there from Amistad, which was directed by uh, Steven Spielberg. Okay, let's, let's go a little deeper, shall we? Uh, her recent work on Ryan Coogler's Marvel superhero film, The Black Panther, which came out in 2018, she became the first African-American to win an Academy Award in Best Costume Design. And that win was also the first Academy Award win for Marvel Studios. Her costumes were inspired by many traditional African garments, those including the Maasai, as well as the Nimbeli. Uh, people. She traveled to Southern Africa to draw the aesthetic inspirations and receive permission to incorporate traditional Lesotho designs into the film's costume. So she's really got this eye for detail, picking out things. She's able to jump around from genre to genre and just really set the stage. Um, Sometimes we don't realize how much a costume designer in a movie really sets the tone and, and makes the movie. And, and also in her recent work, she's relied heavily on 3D p- printers. So if you look on that left-hand side, there's a, I think it's the Queen of Wakanda or something like that. She's got this beautiful kind of, I don't even know what she, that thing that's hanging out. <laughs> I don't know much about textiles, but it was all 3D printed. So it's, it's made out of some kind of plastic. Um, she's also working on the film uh, Coming to America 2, which will be out in... Um, in uh, March, I believe, of 2021 uh, this year. And uh, also heavily used a lot of 3D printing for, for a lot of the gyms and jewelry and stuff in there. And just, just beautiful, beautiful work. Very, very colorful, very over the top. All right, last frame, and we're gonna call on a Rotarian. How about this morning, Seth McGrath? Are you with us, my friend? I'm here. Hey, so I want you to critique, discuss, interpret. Tell me about this type of medium maybe, that we're seeing here in Ruth Carter's ruthless fashion line here. What, what's your thoughts? It's all the I'll same. Thing. I, I, I don't know. know. I don't. Um, it's nothing I would wear. Okay. Okay. What 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 colors we got there? Well, obviously you got greens, reds, grays. You have you know multi tones. Um, I don't exercise. I have, I, that's about my, I'm horrible at this. So no, no, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's got a kind of a sporty feel to it and athletic. I like that you pulled that exercise. You picked up on the colors, right? This, this, uh, you said gray, red, and, and green. I think, I think it was her intention was black, but a lot of times when you do black and you want to do 
tonal work on it, you use a you use a gray because so you can show those variations in colors and stuff like that. So yeah, very very much throwing back to kind of a early '90s uh, flair, maybe urban urban flair here. Um, but yeah, awesome job. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you you giving it a try this morning. Um, and this is, it was a partnership with HF, I believe it is, which is a pretty popular clothing line. Um, well, let's see, Seth, there was a couple I don't knows in there. He struggled a little bit. How about a $10 fine for that? That's fair. I'll do that. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see. Hey, Ross, can you do me a favor? Um, Go, go out to your front doorstep. There, there's something on your doormat, my friend. Uh, let me get my gun. Okay, yeah. You, you might need a, some bear mace or something, too. <laughs> Who is it? And while he's doing that, I'm going to pull up this just for a second. <laughs> it's about to go down, you guys. All right. There he is. Hey, everybody. A newspaper. That was that was all that was on there. And standard. Is that what I was supposed to be getting? There was a little black box. You didn't see that thing. That's what the bomber said. Uh, my goodness. No, yeah. here it is. There here we go. There we go. Hey, <clears throat> so I'm going to pull down the screen share and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our Paul Harris fellow presentation that we're going to do this morning, honoring Ross. Rotary International started a vision uh, of one person, Paul Harris. The Chicago attorney formed the Rotary Club of Chicago on February 23rd, 1905. So professionals with diverse backgrounds could exchange ideas form meaningful and long, lifelong friendships and give back to their communities. The Paul Harris Fellow is an award given to those that have given $1,000, possibly over several years to our foundation's annual fund or Polio Plus Fund. It is one of the most prestigious awards in Rotary and thereby named after the founder of Rotary, Paul Harris. A multiple Paul Harris Fellow is a Paul Harris Fellow who has contributed an additional thousand dollar gifts to the Rotary Foundation. Now, here is something important to remember for our club members. Giving any sum of money to the Rotary Foundation makes you a part of the eradication of polio, a partner in creating peace, a lover of the environment, a person who supports clean water and sanitation throughout the world. It makes someone who believes that all babies, children, and moms should have good medical resources and equal rights. You are a person that is fighting AIDS, polio, malaria, and, and other diseases every single day. Just by giving each year, no matter how big or how small to the Rotary Foundation. Ross Raleigh, uh, you will be recognized, so please be ready. I think you are, hopefully. Welcome, sir, to the union of thousands of Rotarians invested in making this world a much better place. It gives me great pleasure to present to you, on behalf of the trustees of the Rotary Foundation, the emblem of the Paul Harris Fellow. Yeah, and show it up. Maybe talk so your screen comes up, huh? <laughs> Look at that thing. Uh, beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> we, we urge you, Ross, to wear your Paul Harris Fellow pin to all Rotary events. And it is my privilege today and pleasure to present you with a Paul Harris Fellow pin with the distinction of a plus one for his multiple contributions of $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, past president and past assistant governor, Ross. Give it up, everybody, for Ross. Yay! Thank you ever so kindly. It's, uh, it's an easy to contribute to fund and and amazingly, it just builds and builds and builds. And some of us in this room right now are extremely close to getting their first Paul Harris. So I just want to pass that along. If you want to know where you are in your in your point standings, let me know, and I will I will uh, send that information to you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ross. 
Awesome. Great job. And it looks like you got a standing ovation in, in Zoom. <laughs> Typically, I'd ask you guys all to stand, but then we would just be looking at everybody's bellies all morning. So that, that'd be kind of weird. Um, but thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, and uh, this morning to Rotary in general. And thank you, Ross, for giving to the uh, Rotary Foundation. Okay. <clears throat> so each week I'm recognizing, or, or just about every week, I'm trying to recognize a member of our club and talk a little bit about them so we could get to know uh, what makes them an extra special person. And also if there's a new uh, Rotarian, maybe they could get to know that club member a little bit better. And also so we can remember that uh, the, the beautiful thing about Rotary is we have all these people from all these walks of life that have all these strengths and, and getting together, you know, virtually in person, we, we, can, we can build upon these strengths and do amazing things in our community. So who is going to be featured this week? Who's going to be the first Rotarian of the year to get an illustration and a little bit of history about them? Let's do... Frank Ramos this morning. Frank, you there? <laughs> be ready to be I'm here. <laughs> be ready to be recognized. Hey, here's this this awesome illustration of you. I, I put you in like a like a fishmonger outfit. Why why would I do that? I don't know. Because uh, you're so into like crazy food and stuff. So three <laughs> words to describe Frank: linguist, traveler, and foodie. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. If I can press the right button, that would help. <clears throat> Linguist. Frank has always had a deep love for languages um, and had a natural aptitude to learn them. His family immigrated to the United States from El Salvador and he was born in San Francisco. He spent a good part of his early years in the Mission District and it was this melting pot of different cultures which definitely spurred his interest in language. Uh, he's bilingual in Spanish and English, but in his teenage uh, years and young adult years, he helped, uh, he helped as an interpreter for his family, helping him out with all kind of all, all the stuff as they were, were getting to used to America and, and learning the language and stuff. He, he was an uh, integral role in their, in their family. Uh, Ramos also speaks German pretty darn well, which he learned to better communicate with his childhood pen pal from Switzerland. Swiss German, I assume. Frank also had a pen pal from Japan and keeps in touch with them both to this very day. And here we've got some photos of uh, the pen pals, uh, their, their kids. Uh, we've got a really nice picture of Frank and his dad. Uh, and look at that cute photo of Frank with the Mickey shirt on there. Oh, it's so sweet. Photo of Frank in front of the Taj Mahal there. And uh, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Well, let's, let's go deeper. Oh, hey, how to zoom on that. <laughs> Frank, Frank is quite the world traveler. One of the places he visited was Switzerland. One of the first places you visited was, was Switzerland uh, to visit your pen pal, which you saved up for this trip during high school. Um, but it didn't stop there. Uh, he's also visited places like Laos, Thailand, Japan, Germany, France, Myanmar, China, Canada, Singapore, Italy, Austria, Cambodia, South Korea, Turkey, Madagascar, Greece, Vietnam, Nepal, India, Jordan, Argentina, Pakistan, just to name a few. Uh, COVID has changed all of our lives, and that is also quite true with Frank's traveling. Uh, being an auditor, uh, it's also taken him to many locations throughout the U.S., and all of this has been put on hold, as well as his international travel. Frank's partner of 30 years, Steve, whom we can see in the top uh, two left-hand photos here, um, has also traveled with Frank a bit, but usually prefers to stay home while uh uh, Ramos was out there exploring all the different corners of the world. So we've got some really cool photos from, from his youth and, you know, uh, all throughout of all these really cool places that, that you went. Frank, there was just so many travel photos. I realized when I was digging through your, uh, all, all the photos you took, I was like, I could, I could do a whole art series just on some of the beautiful photos you took. Quite the photographer you okay. are. Um, I know you probably never admit it, but gosh, you, you have a great eye for just getting, like capturing these moments in these different places. It was really cool, so. And, oh, hey, we're zooming in on your face again. Uh, and lastly, uh, Frank Ramos, the foodie. Uh, 
<clears throat> you're the definition of a foodie, whether you're dining via business travels in the state or your voyage is internationally, Frank lives for finding good food. He is also an adventurous, uh, you have adventurously eaten your way around the world and found that Southeast Asia is one of your favorite places to visit and taste the local delights. Frank has taken many Thai food cooking courses and even spent a month in Thailand reinforcing that interest. Also a huge fan of Korean food. An interesting fact, an ingredient that he really loves is bone. So <laughs> interesting. And it's one of his favorite, favorite dishes that he enjoys. So incorporating the ingredient of bone or bone marrow into, into dishes. Uh, Frank Ramos's uh, friends and families have remarked that he's driven self-disciplined, never late, dependable, and super generous. Which brings us to the last little bit of Frank Ramos trivia for the day. One of his favorite movies is a Danish piece called Babette's Feast. And this film is centered around Babette, a female French refugee in Denmark who works as a cook for a Danish family and their dwindling congregation. Babette wins the lottery during the film, but instead of using the money on herself, she decides to prepare a delicious dinner for the family and the congregation. More than just a feast, this meal is an outpouring of Babette's appre appreciation and the act of self-sacrifice. And I think this parallels between Frank's story and the story of this movie, the love of food and the giving nature. It's just fabulous. So everyone, let us make joyful finger wangles for our club's very own Frank Ramos. Frank, my Thank friend, you. that you're so very welcome. That delicious illustration has to be worth as much as a duty-free bottle of liquor from Sky Mall, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, sure thing. How hey Ross, where am I at to get into the Century Club? Hold. That far, huh? He, yeah, it's uh, $57 away. $57. All right, Simon, $57. Woo! Hot dog. Thank you so much. You got a good bottle, I think. Well, thank you for the recognition. I really appreciate that. And uh, man, you did a lot of digging. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, some Rotarians are, are easier to dig than, than others. But uh, yeah, it was it was a fun dig. Like I said, I, you know, I, I felt like I was traveling around the world. It was really fun. It was really well, fun. thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. You're, you're so very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being a member of our club. And thank you all the rest of the Rotarians for being awesome people. I can't wait to, to dig deep and, and recognize more of you. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to pass it over to our program chair, Aaron Dunn, who is going to introduce this week's program. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put multiple screen sharing option on because I assume they're going to need to screen share. Thank you, President Simon. It's interesting that today would be a Paul Harris uh, award. Uh, and that it would be for Ross and that you touched on some of the areas of focus that our foundation dollars uh, help support. And our very own foundation chair, Ross Rowley, is going to um, give us more information about the Rotary Foundation and, and really the purpose of why we gather every, more, every Wednesday morning and take it away, Ross. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to screen share, Simon. So let me do that dance through all these things here. Is everybody seeing the full screen? There we go. Actually, here's, I'm gonna speak more on the object of Rotary, the avenues of service and the areas of focus. I had an idea to cover just the areas of focus that Rotary is involved in, but it's, it's a, it was a little more complicated than three days work. So I need to uh, hold that off for another month. But in doing so, uh, I, I started looking through more and more Rotary things and I said, you know, this might be a very good time for us to go and maybe look at uh, the objects of Rotary, the principles of Rotary, um, what we stand for, those kinds of things. A lot of new members don't get to hear these uh, words and they, 
and it'd be good for us to refresh why it is what we do. Sometimes it's important to go back and read important documents like maybe the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence or the Bill of Rights, just so we can kind of keep up on what's going on uh, in our lives. And I think it's the same thing for the object of Rotary. So we'll begin here. Uh, this is a picture of Paul Harris, the founder of Rotary, and he had this to say, this is a changing world. We must be prepared to change with it. The story of Rotary will have to be written again and again. And that's very true. So the guiding principles of Rotary starts with the four-way test, which we all uh, recite every meeting. That's the very foundation of what we do, say and do as, think, say and do as Rotarians. And there's also a code of conduct five avenues of service and the object of Rotary. Now the guiding principles, as we know, we've seen this and uh, this is our founding principle, but there's a little more beyond that. There's also a code of conduct. And that's uh, to be asked of Rotarians to act with integrity, have high ethical standards, deal fairly with others and treat them and their occupations with respect. Uh, to use your professional skills through Rotary to mentor young people, and help those with special needs. And that's what uh, makes it great about Rotary. And then the original ideal was to not have people of the same occupation in a Rotary club. So you wouldn't have three financial advisors, seven school teachers and, a, and six judges. So the idea was to mingle everybody together and have a, have a, a, a wheel of thought, so to speak, and uh, skills. And then the other one is to avoid behavior that reflects adversely on Rotary and other Rotarians. So, you know, that's just being ethical. That's, that's uh, you know, good. Then uh, part of the guiding principles of Rotary are uh, sectioned off into the avenues of service and the areas of focus. And the avenues of service are club service, community service, international service, vocational service, and youth service. And as you can see, we in our club touch on every one of those. Um, the club services that basically says, take care of your club, make sure it grows, make sure it's hanging in there. Community service, which our club does an immense amount of community service. Uh, we also do international service. Uh, vocational service, um, I've seen other clubs do other things with vocational service that have to do with for instance, uh, job fairs, and they might do um, mentoring uh, with your occupation. So that's, a, that's a broad service that one day I hope to explore in this club. And then youth service, as you know, we, we just do tremendous youth service in, in all factions. Now the, the areas of focus, there's one more that's been added at the very bottom just this year and they haven't fully developed it and it's the environmental, just the environment. So well, I'm gonna discuss a little bit about uh, each of these and I'm gonna play a video. But the areas of, of focus, these are, these are where we put our dollars and our time and our energy. And the, the ones are promoting peace, disease prevention, which you know we are we're very involved in the polio projects, uh, water and sanitation, maternal child health, educational literacy and community development. I'm gonna skip past that, that's an extra page. I just said that, so there's no re reason to go over that. Uh, the guiding principles of Rotary, this is not our mission statement, but this is a, a strong statement, which is uh, the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise, and in particular, encourage and foster first the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. I'll have to tell you, you know, I moved down to Fortuna in 2012 and I hardly knew anybody except for maybe tagging along with Aaron. I, and I have grown to have strong acquaintances and friendships within uh, this community just because of Rotary. I don't work here. I don't tend to, I shop here and I live here. But all of my acquaintance it has been through Rotary. So that's, that's a, an incredible first object of Rotary. The second is to have high ethical standards in business 
professions. And I think we kind of understand what that means. The recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations as an opportunity to serve society. And that's everything from the uh, butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Um, we all apply to the one community. A third is the application of ideal service in each of our Rotarian's personal business and community life. Um, you don't have to go as far as Aaron and I and get the rotary emblem shower curtains and bed sheets, but, but it's the ideal of rotary in your everyday life. I think a lot of us do it anyway. It's just part of who we are. And then fourth is the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace throughout the world. Uh, I think that that's, as you know, we have 35,000 clubs across the world. We have uh, one and 1.2 million Rotarians. And as we've traveled, much like Frank and those who of us who have traveled to international conventions, you're seeing this mass Rotary Club. We're all the same. And there's, there's 35,000 clubs, 34,999 just like us out there, big and small. The fourth object of Rotary also takes in this advancement of world understanding, and that's the youth exchange. And, and we've seen that uh, thrive here in this part of California in Sonoma County and all the way up to Del Norte County. It, it's a strong program. The friendship exchange, I don't know if we've had club members go on a friendship exchange yet, but friendship exchanges going to another club and it could be anywhere in the world or as easy as you know Portland Oregon or New York City and they'll they'll send a club member out here to stay and we'll send a club member there and we'll learn about their club and we might go to Dayton Ohio and see what uh, yeah, it's like for their rotary clubs vocational training teams used to be called the DSC teams which Aaron yell that out Groups, it's group study exchange. Now we've seen group study exchanges come through Fortuna. Uh, we've seen them from Japan and uh, India, I believe, and France. And they've come through and they're studying our region. And we have sent people to uh, exactly the same places. They've gone to France. And, and one of the big ones that happened here in Humboldt County was uh, multiple trips to Siberia with Dr. Kim Biradel study how their hospitals are set up and it's and they came here and I remember hearing a report that when the Siberian doctors came to the United States to study they actually practically uh, fell down in tears because they didn't have the medical facilities that we have in the United States and they were big emphasis that Kim Beardell was going after was for uh, developmentally disabled people. And they were just astonished how far advanced we were compared to them. But that's, that's what comes from these training teams is, is to go and see what the rest of the world's doing. And then the international conventions. If you've been to an international convention, it's just a marvelous experience to be in a room with thousands of other Rotarians from all over the world. And you're all there uh, trying to uh, commingle and get ideas to bring back to your home and, and see what Rotary is headed to into the future. And then uh, one of the objects of Rotary is we're an apolitical, a-religious organization. We're gender neutral. Um, we have Rotary action groups and Rotary action groups are specialized groups that will take on a project like a, like a water well. There's a big one called WASRAG, which is Water and Sanitation Rotary Action Group. And, and they uh, travel throughout the world and, and focus in on water and sanitation. But there are Rotary Action Groups for so many different um, issues and trying to find answers and, and groups get together and and study those to see what plan they can put together. And then Rotary Fellowships can be, I learned about this when I was president, a Rotary Fellowship might be uh, Rotarians who are bikers and they connect and they go on these uh, motorcycle rides. There are Rotarian stamp collectors. There are Rotarian Boy Scout leaders. There are Rotarian um, quilters there. And it just goes on and on and on. And if you're interested, I can find you, if you have an avocation 
and you want to meet other Rotarians who are, say, into traveling or, or like I said, uh, motorcycle riding, they're out there and they sometimes will get together and, and do a, an event at some destination point, maybe a district conference or, or such. And then uh, our ideal is to advance peace through uh, UNESCO, which is, uh, I think it's engineering, science, and community organization, United Nations. Uh, we are a strong force within the United Nations just because we have 35,000 clubs and 1.2 million people from around the world. Um, we are peace scholars. We have peace centers in strategic locations around the world. I don't believe there are any in the United States at this moment. There was one in Los Angeles or San Diego, and they're usually based around universities. And uh, I think we lost ours. And then there's the Rotary Action Group for Peace. And then here's what we find through fellowship is we have regular Rotary meetings and that's where we foster, uh, we foster uh, fellowship. We have social gatherings and parties and these can be you know, much like what we did with our 25th birthday party. Uh, it's, it's a way for us to gather and uh, do good in the world. There's the district conferences and there are the events uh, like the district assembly trainings and then and then some of them are like the bicycle ride, bicycle ride that went from Crescent City to Sebastopol. These are, these are nifty gatherings of Rotarians along with the international conventions and the uh, leadership training uh, that um, if you go to Pets be, as you're the president elect, that would be a huge leadership training. There are other leadership trainings that are happening all the time. Um, everything um, well, that would be covering foundations and memberships and, and uh, some things that Frank is involved in is um, online studying. And I found a, the Rotary Learning Center this week and it's filled with uh, training modules on various topics of Rotary. And that leads us to our, that leads us to our, um, our slogan for this year. And uh, I'm gonna show a little video real quick. And it's just a couple of minutes long and it discusses more of the six areas of focus. And here we go. Is there audio? There is not. It's a very nice silent film. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will stop it at this time. Um, it was great. You had to have been there. So uh, I will figure out that kink as we go along uh, for the next uh, uh, meeting of that. Uh, so that that is my share for the day. I just thought that we might go back and just relive those uh, objects of Rotary just to put them back in our heads again and, and think about who we are and what we do. And that's my program. Any questions? Thank you very much, Ross. Yeah, any, any questions about our areas of service? Just a comment here, President yeah, Simon. Uh, Ross, that was not a very flattering picture of a Rotarian, I thought. I just want to make that comment. Well, it was 
flattering. No, it wasn't. <laughs> In the physical sense. <clears throat> it was animated too. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, there was a wonderful story. It was it was built by rotor actors, and uh, it was a it was you had to see it. Next time I'll do the puppet show. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody would respond to a puppet show better. <laughs> why didn't anybody? Why didn't anybody tell me there was no sound? That uh, <laughs> we didn't anyway. know there had to be sound. Yeah, I, I sent you a message. I just don't think it popped up on your screen. Sorry, Rob. No, because it, it was covered. You know, it would have been really funny if we made our own audio for it. You just, you played it back and we could, oh no, there's a dragon. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. My favorite part in the beginning was, I guess, during childhood when the big knowledge thing fell out of the sky and knocked him over. Is that like school or something? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, you should have been there. It was great. <laughs> Can you hum along? Can you hum it or whistle? Yeah, that might not have worked. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you again, Rob. <laughs> is, there, uh, is there any Rotarian that's got any announcements to make? Anything they want to bring to the table before we do our little drawing here and uh, get on our way? One comment, Simon. Uh, <clears throat> I looked up Babe Ruth's uh, initial salary. Okay. It is. He was, back in 22, he was paid $52,000 a year for a three-year contract. Woo. Then it jumped up to $80,000 and <clears throat> interview him asked him, he says, don't you think it's a little embarrassing getting paid more than the president of the United States? And his response was, I had a better year than he did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So oh, Babe Ruth, what a character. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. That was good. That was good. Um, yeah, I hope I hope these these meetings, the history, the art, it gets you guys thinking, and maybe you go and, and do research like that. It, it's always fun to kind of like just learn more stuff, you know. I, I, I love learning. You're right. such a teacher. <laughs> I will do the drawing. Who uh, would be this week? Who could potentially win fifty dollars? Sal Kenichi. Look at that. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Big 50 bucks. Let's see. Sal, you're going to have an opportunity to do a craft talk. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Let's see. So maybe I'll pass that to Don. <laughs> it's funny that Don said that. <laughs> that is legit. <laughs> the ball that I pulled was craft talk. Craft talk or twenty-five dollar fine. What What do you want to do, Sal? You want to do a craft? Boy, talk? that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, torture my fellow Rotarians with a craft talk or pay twenty-five bucks. Um, I say go with torture, but that's. The thing. <laughs> I, I'd like to put twenty-five bucks towards polio. I think, unless yeah, yeah, unless uh, boss has a better idea. No, no. no it, you you can place that money anywhere you like. You're just pretty low on the Century Club, but it is only mid-season, so that time. Yeah, I might have to Photoshop his face on something else. All right, let's put it towards the Century Club. Okay. <laughs> no more animals. <laughs> no more. Okay. Duly noted. Duly noted, sir. Uh, all right. Well, I think so, that, Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Sal. Thank you, Ross. Thank you all the club members for coming out every uh, or, or getting up and getting in front of your computer every morning. Really appreciate it. It's so important that we keep getting together, even if it's apart together. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Have an awesome Rotary Day and a magnificent week. We'll see you soon. This club meeting is closed. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Ross. Thank Thanks, Frank. Thank